I'm Dr. Chad Larson. How cool is this that they finally opened up the beach here in Southern California? Uh, it's awesome. Uh, so you probably see lots of people passing in the background, uh, doing some exercise. It's so nice out here today. Uh, but anyhow, it um, just reminds me of some of the statistics. You know, everywhere you go, you're just reminded of, of COVID and you're reminded of the impact that this shutdown has had on every sector of the U.S. Every, you know, economic variable is massively influenced by this whole shutdown. And it just reminds me of some of the latest statistics that I wanted to just kind of mention. Um, I've mentioned before in past episodes how important the integrity of your metabolic system is. And in fact, when a person has metabolic syndrome, they're at a much, much greater risk factor of a worsening situation with COVID and frankly, other things as well. It's just that uh, now everybody knows the importance of pre-existing conditions when it comes to general health and it can put you at risk factor when this kind of thing uh, goes down with the human body. So um, I'm just struck by the statistics out of uh, some of the places that have the higher rates of hospitalizations. And uh, when they look at uh, high blood pressure and obesity and diabetes, each of these individually has a several fold increase in the risk of hospitalization if you get COVID. Like for example, for each one of those, for heart disease, obesity, and diabetes, there's a two to three fold higher chance that you're gonna get hospitalized. Remember two to three fold is like two to three times or 200 to 300% greater chance that if you get COVID, it's gonna end up in uh, the requirement of hospitalization. And they've, they've looked at the statistics on this when you combine those things, which is unfortunately incredibly common to have all three of those, obesity, high blood pressure, and diabetes, all three of them, there's a 16 fold. That means a 16 times or 1600% greater chance of being hospitalized if you get COVID. Um, that's a big deal. That should lead to a completely national campaign of teaching people how to eat and live their lifestyle to decrease these incredible, incredible statistics and risk factors. Because guess what? Less than 13% of the adults in the US are metabolically fit. And what I mean by meta metabolically fit, they, didn't, they do not have uh, elevated triglycerides, elevated blood pressure, um, elevated waist circumference, um, obesity, diabetes. If you don't have any of these things, you only fit into less than 13% of the adult population. Remember, adult population includes 20 year olds, 19 year olds. So uh, these statistics of the 13% uh, percent that are metabolically healthy are probably those that are under like 30 years old because the statistics show that over 40, you have a one in 4% chance of having uh, metabolic syndrome. And that's metabolic syndrome. And I'll come back to that in just a moment. And if you're over 50, you have a one in two chance of having metabolic syndrome. Remember metabolic syndrome means you have three out of the five of those criteria. You have, um, the three, uh, you have three out of the following five things, elevated blood sugar, elevated blood pressure, elevated triglycerides, low HDL cholesterol, and a waist circumference above 40 in men and 35 in women. All it takes is three out of the five of those to have metabolic syndrome. The reason why I'm so big on this, and I have been for the last several years, but now it's just finally you know, coming to a head with, uh, with COVID, is that I had metabolic syndrome. And I know what I'm doing with diet and lifestyle. And because of some things that I wasn't quite paying attention uh, close enough to for my body as an individual, I had metabolic syndrome and I know what I'm doing. So when I found that out, um, that really led me to dive down deep into the rabbit hole of metabolic disease and metabolic health to um, help other people. Because as I started looking at my patient population and running those particular statistics, it became blatantly obvious that um, people who are even seemingly healthy can have metabolic syndrome and puts them at the same statistical uh, measurements 
as people who actually look like they have metabolic syndrome. So um, it's a major thing and it's something that I've taken a deep dive into. Here's the thing is that what we need to have is this national campaign of, of experts teaching you how to eat properly and to live a lifestyle that promotes a healthier metabolic uh, fitness. But guess what? Ain't gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. The reason why, all of the uh, kind of expert attention is on the vector, not the human body. The vector meaning the virus. All the attention is on the virus. It's all about the vaccine. You're just the innocent victim who has no responsibility in this. And based on these statistics, you have massive, massive responsibility to uh, not only public health, but your own individual health. So I just wanted to share some of these latest statistics. Um, metabolic health um, cannot be more important. And um, it's the only, you know, kind of one thing that I hope turns out to be a silver lining is that people get the idea that these pre-existing metabolic uh, issues matter and that they're gonna start to pay attention and they're gonna start following and doing the things that uh, need to happen. So stay tuned to this show as we continue to take a deeper and deeper dive and we help you to, um, to make the changes that I had to make in my diet lifestyle to overturn my met metabolic syndrome. So um, I will keep reading the studies and bring you the information. Until then, keep it real.